how you been, bro? Like, um, where where you at, man? In terms of um, how you feel about your career, how it's gone so far. Um, we all dreamed of playing in the Premier League, and and we we didn't get there. You know what I mean? And and also life. So how do you feel about um, two questions? How do you feel about where you're at in your career, footballing career, and how do you feel about where you're at in life right now? No, first of all, like I'm blessed. I'm I'm good. Um, you're saying I didn't reach the prem. I believe I'm the I'm in the national league prem. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a different type of Premier League. But no, nah, listen. Um, in terms of not reaching there yet, um, I'm happy with it because it goes back to your question with where 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 do you think I am in life as well. Um, I'm happy about being James Alarby. I'm happy about being the guy I am today. And I think that goes into my football as well. Um, what you see is what you get. And I've reached a position in life where I don't really look at other people's opinions and, and listen to the noise outside. So for me, um, whenever something goes right or something goes wrong, I look at myself. So I'm, I'm happy with, with where I'm at. Mm -hmm. What about you? What would you say about yourself? Um, <coughs> for a long time, I actually was kind of like upset that play highest level, you know. But um, there's way more to life than, than than football. You know, football is just it's just the beginning, and I'm grateful that football has actually opened up doors, um, and, and we've managed to. Use, you use it to, to help us propel into the next chapter and hopefully when we are done we land we land safely into our next chapter whatever venture we want to go into next so I'm, I'm grateful um, in terms of life um, life is good man life is good life is hard yeah I can see, I can see by your watch <laughs> the sweet no life is hard you know you're always gonna something's always going on you, you know what I mean? And um, whether that's relationship, family, but it's just about rolling with, rolling with the punches. Um, it's never going to be smooth sailing. It's never going to be a moment where, where you've you got to make, where you feel like, okay, now I can make a move. you just got to move regardless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And for a long time, I was waiting for that, for that moment where like, oh, yeah, when I'm in this position or that position, I'm gonna make this move and that move, and it was it, it never came. Uh, I just had to move, you know, and and it's the um, probably one of the best things I've ever done, you know, and and I'm not where I want to be, but I'm grateful that yeah I'm on route to becoming what, what I actually want to be, if that makes sense. You know, what w I mean? would you say there was a like a a breaking point or a situation that happened in your life for you to then make a change? Because you don't just turn up and, and be the person you are today. Would you say there's a lot of things that's gone on that's helped you got to, to this position in terms of life and how you view it? Yeah, there was two two points for me. Two, two points for me. So um, the first one was when um, my last season in the Football League, um, thought I was gonna get a club, uh, thinking yeah, this club wants you, that club wants you. Gone away, gone away to Miami and Dubai, thinking uh, when I come back I'm gonna sign for another club. And when I come back, the phone phone didn't, literally didn't ring. You know what I mean? And um, that was odd. It was weird because and when you when you say phone didn't ring, you mean like. A club not calling. Yeah, a club not calling. A club not calling. Um, that was weird because up until that point, um, between nineteen years old when I first started and twenty twenty five, I think that happened. Um, I always, I always got 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 a club. I always, I was always all right. You know, always played or whatever. So that one was a bit of a shock coming back and and the phone not the phone not ringing. You know. Um, and I was at home for a while, I was at home for a while. 
just sitting trying to stay fit but it's, it's, it's hard you know it's hard to stay to stay motivated when you're in that position because you don't know what's around the corner um, and not, it looks like nothing is actually around the corner and then um, I've gone I've gone to I've signed for a club and I remember when I first signed for that club in the National League at the time they offered me a non a non contract at first. You know what I mean? That 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 for me made me realise, oh, this this football thing's kinda sticky still. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um it's not guaranteed. So I remember I just started thinking about doing other things. That's when it it clicked, you know what I mean? Um but you need to start thinking about other things. You need to start doing other things. So it's always been in my mind from the age of 25 that oh, this this thing's not forever. Um, and um, the second moment was second moment was lockdown, you know, um, nothing to do, you know what I mean. A lot of self reflection, a lot of looking at yourself, um, a lot of yeah, just reflecting on yourself and people say it, pe- like not people. I mean. You, 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 you think looking at your life and thinking where you're at and I wasn't in a bad position but it was like I looked at my life and and when I looked back at it it was that the last the last three or four years of my life have been that there, there hadn't been any upward trajectory it's just been stable 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 and I thought nah I've been I've been at this level for too long, way too long. It's time to actually level up, you know. And like they say that two people come out, you come out of lockdown worse or better off. I feel like I used that time well, and I made sure I used that time to work on my growth, my betterment. You know what I mean? And I've come out the other side swinging um, with a plan, with a vision, with a purpose. So I'll say those two moments in my life have been have been game changers for me. Um, have you ever struggled as well, like in terms of like not finding a club and whatnot? My thing's my thing's different because um, I think I've said it in one of the previous episodes in season one where I didn't necessarily look at myself as being a footballer. Um, I had a dream of playing football, but I I never thought I'd actually be a footballer. So, and I've mentioned to you before, we've had chats about you and and, and some of the other men, and like, when I was young, I was already going to trial to loads of places and whatnot, and being told no before yes, wherever I go. So I already had in my mind, it's gonna be no, no, no. Um, So as I got older, and I'm going to clubs, and they'll see a glimpse of, me playing well, and then they'll be like, okay, cool, he's not playing well, then he's out the door, out the door. Mm. It wasn't really much of a shock to me because from where I've come from and where I grew up, obviously we know it's rough and it was difficult. Mm. Um, And I looked at the little pleasures in terms of like going to stay in digs and getting paid X, Y, Z amount, Mm. um, having your name on the back of your shirt, the number, it, that in itself for me was mm. big for me. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So whenever I wasn't playing, I wouldn't really necessarily call it a struggle for me because I've already come up from a situation where I never thought I'd play football. Um, I think the biggest struggle I probably have when it comes to life, it was I didn't know my identity. So I was always trying to be someone else, always trying to fit in and... I felt like if I'd done that, then football-wise, my football's going to go up. Mm. And it's crazy you say that. Um, those were the game changers for you. I feel like the game changer for me was me knowing myself. Mm. And I feel like that's only happened in the last 18 months. Mm. And I feel like me getting to know myself has now helped me in every avenue in life. So I'd probably say that's my, my, my main game changer. So what did not having an identity look like for you? It was mad because when you're coming from a certain environment, mm. where we're from, 
and then going into a professional environment and not being taught and obviously being the troublesome kid, always getting in trouble, getting kicked out of school, all of that jazz, um, going to centre, growing up around violence, all of that. Then going into a professional environment and you see white kids, people from different areas up north and whatnot. Mm. Like at 15, I'm moving to Stoke. Mm. 16, no, 14, I'm moving to Stoke. 15, I'm moving to Scotland. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So 15, 14 year old, black from Peckham, South East London, then you're going to live in them places. Automatically, you want to impress, but you see how the other um, footballers and kids are, are moving, so you automatically try and move like them. And at my age, when I was young, everyone used to think I'm, I'm big, I'm aggressive and whatnot, but I'd always be like, they always used to call me like the friendly giant. And for years and years and years, I'm trying to change my game but on top of that, I'm trying to act like them. But I don't feel comfortable in doing it. So to the point where even when I'm playing games, like man's nervous before man's even got on the pitch. Thinking, okay, cool. Man's got to do this, but it's not my game. Man's got to do flicks, I've got to do tricks, I've got to do all of that, but it's not me. So it was always difficult, like trying to break that cycle until it gets to a point where everyone's saying that, like any club I go to, getting released, go on loan to this place, it's not working out. Go on loan to this place, it's not working out. To the point where I say, okay, you know what? You know what? Man's going to do what I want to do. I don't care what anyone says. And that didn't come from on the, on the pitch, though. Mm. That came from, like, even in life itself, people look at me like I'm this certain person and whatnot. But when I started to show myself and show people that this is me, it was crazy because a lot of people started warming to me more. Everyone wanted to be around me. And I'm not playing at the highest level, by the way. I think people on my social media, everyone, they probably think I play at a mad level, but I don't. Mm. But because of how I am and being myself, it makes a lot of people just want to be around me more. And that transpired onto the pitch. So would you say um, um, when you didn't have an identity crisis, how did that affect you in life? Not, not only on the pitch, but in life. When I didn't. Yeah. So when I knew who I was? When you didn't know who you was, how did that affect you in your life, your day-to-day -day life? Oh, it wasn't... I just try to cover it. I just try and act like everything's calm. I, like, one thing I used to do was always wear a mask. Always act like, okay, it's cool. It would just be a case of, okay... Like, there was times where... Because I didn't know who I was, I was dreading, like, training. Going to training, thinking everything's going to be cool but I just can't wait to get home and just shot away from playing football. Mm. But it, it was tough, it was difficult. No, it's definitely tough, because even um, that period where I, I, didn't, I, didn't get a, I didn't have a club, mm. I remember um, I, linked, I linked Larry and we had a mad conversation where we were both just like in tears because um, we couldn't believe it. We thought... You know when you come from the, the, the ends um, and you come in the game, make a debut 19 and you think, yeah, this guy's going all the way. Mm -hmm. he's, going, he's going to the prison. Everyone just thought, yeah, Fem, Femi's going all the way. And that was just like a bombshell, a massive bombshell. And I tried to, I tried to, I tried to play it cool. I remember um, my missus, it was her birthday. This is when I knew it was peak. It was her birthday. And it was her 25th. And she wanted to go Hakazan. Bro. Peak. <laughs> Bro, I remember, yeah. I think I had exactly a bills in my account, yeah. £100. Exactly £100 in my account. And I went there. And I think the bill came up to like ninety something pound. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> it was mad, mm. like like crazy, isn't it? But it's one of those ones where 
it's pride in it. You, you know what I mean? Um, obviously, look, good girl deserves it. And if I'm being she's, honest, she's your wife now. If I'm being honest, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll do it again. It's probably, probably first time she can hear the story. I'll, I'll probably do it again because it was a correct investment, you know. <laughs> but, 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 but um, honestly, it was, it was, it was crazy. And at the time, I, I didn't, I didn't do it more for the investment. If I'm being honest, I'd done it more to show face, to show face and save. Embarrassment, you know. What yeah, I mean? but it's, that's that's how it is. Like any, yeah. Even now, like if if man goes out on a date with a girl, you're hundred percent gonna wanna show that. Listen, I'm the man. I'm gonna pay. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just it's, it's, it's normal. Even if you got no fees. No, I'm not saying you should oh, do it. Yeah. But I'm saying that, just like I'm saying, if the money's there, oh, okay, man, yeah, are gonna yeah, show yeah, that. Yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. I'm paying for you. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But yeah, that was that was a massive. That was a massive. Um, point in my career and it was also just like it was like yeah I've got to get my, my family I've got to get my together man my finances together man like I said I just came off the back of um, a holiday in Miami and a holiday in Dubai so what what so what, can... what what happened because you went off we went off topic a bit yeah so you saw 97 pound so what happened after that waited for her to go to the toilet paid the bill <laughs> to see if it goes through went through <laughs> Came back, I was like, it's paid for. <laughs> that's, that's, literally, that's literally what happened. So if she, if she said, I'll pay for one another drink or nothing, what would you have done? Bro, we just thank God that man wasn't put, in, <laughs> man wasn't put into that situation because when I say there was no, no. peas left at there. Remember, I was on the non-contracting. Yeah. I had whips. But what, 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 what would make you go on that and... date if you know that's all you have? Because I, bro, like, hack a song, like, if, was, and was, if I've got a bills left, I'm not going to... girl? I know, but and I'm saying, birthday. babe, listen. It was her birthday. Babe, listen, like, let's go. Listen, let's do That's what I said. Else. It's probably to show face. Okay. But at the same time, I'm not one of those guys that do things only to show face. I'm also... I, was, I do a lot of... Most things I do is because I feel like it's the right thing to do. So even if it kills me, I'll still do something. You know what I mean? And... and yeah. That, 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 that's literally that's literally what happened, man. You know what I mean? But um, what was I saying? So, yeah, like, obviously, Miami, Dubai, bread spent. And it even made me... I came back and I was like, bro, I'm on a low. And it even made me realise I need to... I need to pack my finances. Like, this is crazy. I can't be in this position again. You know what I mean? So I used that year to knuckle down. Used that year to knuckle down massively. But I feel like... I feel like... A lot of a lot of a lot of people. I mean, not even football. A lot of people are um, don't don't really like speaking on 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 this on this topic like finances and stuff. Like we're human. We make mistakes, isn't it? It's about learning and growing from it. So I'm not ashamed to tell you say that I was when I was young. I was reckless. I came from I came from nothing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Literally nothing. You know. Um, and all of a sudden, yeah, I'm here playing football in League One, 19 years old. Like, bro, I can make one or two mistakes as long as as long as it's not detrimental to my life. You know what I mean? And thank God it wasn't detrimental to to my life. Thank God that I managed to recover from those mistakes. But yeah, like, it happens, isn't it? Enjoy, like, we we enjoy life. We always we've we've been looking from afar. For a long time, looking from afar and looking, oh, this guy's got that or this guy's got that. So, yeah, like, when I got my money, I went and got my whip. You know what I mean? Mm. I went and got my rolly. Like, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. I went and got these things, bro. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? And, yeah, like, it, we just thank God that we're here now and, 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 and I'm still here. I'm here to tell the tell and give back to the, to the youth and just tell them to... Be a bit more mindful, say for a rainy day, you know. Um, what was it like for you? Was you, was you reckless? No, nah, because the bread's always local, you feel me? <laughs> the bread's there, so man can afford to be reckless. No, nah, do you know what it is? No, no, go on. It was... Everything happened quick. And, like, growing up, man was always a hustler. 
St. Michael's school days, what man used to do, I'm going to say this on camera, oh my day. <laughs> so what man used to do, from year 7 to year 11, no year 10, because I got kicked out of year 10, um, me and my boy, I'm not going to say his name, in case the police come and get me, <laughs> um, we'd go to Morrison's, because my mum would give us like a tenner for the week. And that's, that's good money, that's like two quid that's a day. Right. Yeah, yeah it's two right, quid a day. Um, free, we had free school meal, meals. Yeah. But, you know, from young, I've always wanted like more, do you get what I'm trying to say, to look like the bigger, the bigger guy in school. So what we'd do is go to Morrison's, Woolworth Road, um, backpack. We would steal from Morrison's, we would take Rocky Bars, Capra Suns, <laughs> um, crisps, <laughs> drinks, everything. And we'll take it, go to school, sell everything for a quid, 50p, just mm. make, make money. So I'd, in a week, I'd make about 40, 50 quid. Okay. But there's a game that we used yeah. to do as well called Scramble. I don't know if you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone would put like... Throw the money on throw the, the money. And, and I, I, didn't, I didn't have kickers at first. I had the big church shoes. Yeah. So when I put my foot there, no one's taking it. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? So um, money-wise, I, I never really had issues because mm. I'd make my money in school. Then I signed for Stoke, um, signed professional deal. But then shortly after that, signed for Celtic. Um, a three-year pro there, only spent a year at, at Celtic, then got paid up for the next two years. So that was big P's in my account at, at such a young age, 16. And then I went back to sign for Stoke. So thankfully, thank, thankfully to God, I've always like had money. Now, in terms of being reckless with it, um, people would call it reckless because you're spending your money. I've always got this fear in myself that, like, not even fear, I've heard it. I'm not from scared money, don't make yeah, no money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All that's of that, true. yeah. That's true. So my thing is, I know that if I spend money, money's going to come back because I've got ideas, I know what I want to do. So I wouldn't call it reckless. Some people call it reckless. Some people that look on the outside say, yeah, listen. But I think people that say that to me, I think they're, they're scared with their money kind of thing. I, I know what I put my money into, um, so I wouldn't call it reckless. Mm, I get you, I get you, I get you. Would you, would you agree or not? Because I, I know a lot of people would, would see this and say, no, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you've got to save, man. Like. I agree. People that say I they agree. save, I think it's, it's, it's like, scared your cops. No, I, I agree. Look, I agree that scared money don't make no money. And I also, mm. I'm, I'm also a massive believer in you create your life. And what I mean by that is... Um, when you say I can't afford it or it's too expensive, just remain there, bruv. It's yeah. gonna be it's, <laughs> it's gonna be expensive for you for a very long time until yeah. you change your mindset. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm a massive believer, massive believer in that. Um, but you can still be reckless because you can still get caught up. Um, we've had some crazy nights, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're doing a mad thing, you know. Name, name, name one. What would you say our worst one is? I'm saying, I'm saying Miami. Club Lib. Oh. <laughs> I know people in the background, they're even laughing while we're, we're, we're saying this. That one was crazy. We're not going to disclose the, 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 um, the price on the table, yeah. but yeah, that one, that one, that one's crazy. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's been some wild nights, some wild nights, you know? Um... But where you at in terms of um, your relationship? <laughs> what do you mean? Relationship? You're always, you're, always, you're always coming on here saying single, 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 <clears throat> single. So what's, what's really going on? Yeah, no, listen, man's actually single. Um, I've been single for about two years, 2018. No, Sweet. it's coming up to three. So what, what happened with you and your last girlfriend? Oh, um, right, let me, can you put the mic here? Yeah, I'm going to take my jacket off. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're gonna get into this one. I need to take my jacket off. I get hot. So your jacket's off, bro. <laughs> um. Listen, I don't want to be. I don't want to be careful what, what what I'm gonna say. I was in a relationship for about five years, and um. I'd openly say it's it's the girl, um, that I fell in love with. But um. It goes back to what, what I was telling you about playing football at such a young age, um, moving to Stoke. Um, obviously, you know that comes with a lot of people wanting to be around you. They always want to be around the football and whatnot. And at that time, a lot of women's coming towards me. And I met her when I was 18. And I came back to London. So at a barbecue, spoke to her. But at this time, there's so many other females that want to speak to me and get to know me. Um, while that's happened, I didn't know how to deal with it. Of course, you got the you got the stereotype about footballers that always say, "Listen, cheats, all of this stuff." And at that time, yeah, I cheated. Um, spoke to another girl, seen her doing whatever, this, that, and forth. And um, it got to a point, I was with my missus for about two years or a year. And I believe God wanted me to get caught because how I got caught just did not make no sense. Because <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, like even when I'm thinking back at it now, I'm thinking for me to get caught like this just didn't make sense. So my, my missus is at a workplace and we're about to go on our first vacation away. And she gets her phone out and says, listen, girls, like people on her, her, her colleagues at the time, she's like, listen, I'm going on my vacation, first one, blah, blah, blah. And one of the girls have gone, oh, let's, you've never showed us your man. Show us your man. So cool. She's got, she's got her phone out, showed her who I was. Then the girl's gone, wait, hold on. This is your man. So I'm like, I, obviously, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you the story, innit? So my missus has gone, yeah, like, this has been my man for, like, 18 months. Like, what's the problem? She goes, um, okay, give me a second. I'm going to make a call. So she calls the girl that I was seeing at the time as well. And she calls her, and the girl's gone, can you send me the picture of the, of the guy that you've been seeing, the footballer? The girl sends the picture of me. Goes back to my missus and says, listen, my friends, she didn't cap. She called her, put my missus and the girl on the phone to each other. <laughs> Blurred everything out, just said everything. So I'm in Stoke at the time. Um, no, sorry, Chester at the time. I get a call from my missus saying, who's X, Y, Z? I'm like, what? what are you talking about? You're, like, like, you're lying. Like, what do you mean? And my missus, then the actual girl, the other girl, calls me at the same time. Then I knew. That's when I woke up because I was asleep. And I thought it was a dream. But when both of them are calling me at the same time, <coughs> now I woke up and said, what's going on? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, and when that happened, um, there was a massive shift, as, as you'd, you'd like to, to think in the relationship and obviously in every relationship you have rocky patches but you know like once you've done something bad you're always going to get reminded you'll be watching a film like there'll be times yeah like a year later or even two years later we're watching a film and someone's cheating in the film and you'll be laying with your with your bae and she goes hmm, hmm. and i'm thinking what well, like it's got nothing to do like come yeah. on we're over this like yeah, yeah, yeah. spoon so that was happening until like the last year where Rose changed. She flipped the script and she cheated on man. Mm. And when that happened, like I think as men, we always think that it can never happen to us. We always believe that we're the ones that's doing the bad. This is my girl. She's always going to be my girl. No matter what I do to her, she's never going to change. 
so when that happened to me, it was a massive like shock because um, big James and I'll be like, girls want me, things want me, to the point where I'm now seeing that she's done it. This is the girl that I've loved. This is the girl that I've given my everything to. She's done it to me. And I'm like, oh, Ooh. okay. So this can actually happen to people like us. Do you know what I mean? So from when that situation happened, I've kind of like took a lot of time to myself and now said, you know what? I've got to better myself if I'm going to get into another situation. I wouldn't like to say um, I'm scarred because I think everything happens for a reason but it's, and it's made me a better person. But I've taken time away to now realise that, listen, if I'm going to get into a relationship, I've got to be, one, a better person, and number two, be comfortable enough to know that this is the person that I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. And if I'm, if I'm having any doubt, then I shouldn't be in a relationship with her. So, like, in terms of being single, that's probably why, because I feel like now, at the space I'm in in life, Unless I know you're going to be my wife, then I don't see no point in getting into a relationship with you. Understandably so, bro. And that's crazy that you even said that. You know what I mean? I feel like... Bro. It's mad, isn't it? It's mad, but... You, you but was, you, is... How did you feel? Because you was there throughout the whole situation when... I think the latter, the latter stage is when I told you what happened and I got cheated. Because you were surprised yourself. That goes to show how much of a man you are that you're, you're but, but would you to but, say these things. Sorry to cut you off, but would you say, though, like, I've played a massive part in, in what's happened because you you saying that she had to go, yeah? But then you've got to now realise what I've done, how much I've damaged her for us to then get to that stage. Yeah. So, because I, I remember at the time, I wanted to take her back. Yeah. But... And I understand why. Mm -hmm. Remember, I, I said that I, I, I fully get why. Mm -hmm. Like, ego aside, I get why people, if, if, if your girl cheats on you, that why you want to take them back. But in that situation, it was a no-go. And we know why, innit? You got what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, yeah, it just, it, just, it just couldn't happen. But like you said, you have grown massively from it. You know what I mean? Um, and it has made you a better man. It's made you a better person. And look, the only way is up for you, man. And 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 yeah, credit to you for even saying that. You know, what I mean, I, d I didn't even see that coming. I can't lie to you. But um, with where you're at now, with where you're at now, because it seems like you're in a good space, James. I'm gonna lie to you. Where are you trying to take life to? Where are you trying to take it to now? <coughs> Listen, m m my thing is just being happy. And whatever makes me happy is what, what I'm going to do. Um, that's with football. That's with baller talk. That's with women. That's with my family. If you make me happy, then it, you'll fool me. If not, then I have, I have no qualms um, letting you go, letting you aside. It comes with, like, if you talk about football, if I feel like the club, if I speak to a manager, and like I think you saw in previous episodes when I'm talking to managers and whatnot, negotiations, if I don't have that feel-good factor, I'm not going to do it. If I'm not scared to... My family's my family. And if you're not making me happy, I'm not scared to let you go. Women that I speak to, that I date with, listen, if you're not making me happy, you're going to go. So that's just... My, my, the biggest thing for me is happiness. Like, I think everyone knows... On set now, people that watch me, the first thing they always say is, James, you're always smiling. And I, I want everyone to know that that's, it's not an act. That's literally how I am. So if you know that I'm not smiling, just know that that day that James is not smiling is around that person. You see that person? Bye. <laughs> I get that, I get that. That's interesting. For me, I feel like... Um I just want to. I just want to continue just giving. You know what I mean, inspiring. Um, what's crazy? What's crazy? You, it's probably the first time you heard this, but when I realised that, okay, you can be a voice or whatever you want to call it, um, or part, part my purpose or whatever you want to call it, it was it was 
it was you, how you and Manny received me. That's what's so crazy about it. And when we first built our relationship and how you guys received me, how you guys looked at me, uh, I thought, oh, these guys... Because I don't, I, don't, I don't come on that, you know already, I don't come on the... I'm not one of those guys that come on the little bro thing on all of that. I've never called you little bro. I've never called... Do you know what I'm saying? I've never, I don't come on that. But how you guys took to me and when you needed advice and you needed this and you needed that, um, and you ring my phone and how that relationship happened organically, it made, it made me think, oh, okay, you kind of know what you're talking about and you guys have let me know what I'm talking about and you guys let me know where... I need to tweak, you know, Femi, you're too serious. <laughs> I always said that. You know, I need to tweak and you know where my strengths are as well. Do you get what I'm saying? And and it was, it was you guys are a massive part of this journey for me because without James or without Manny, I can honestly say I don't think I'll be where I'm at and I wouldn't know what I want to do or what I want to achieve, if that makes sense. Because it started with you guys. And this is why I always say, no matter what happens to me, you cannot, cannot lose in life. Like, you will never lose. Like, even if it kills, man. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if it kills, man, over my dead body, I can't let you lose, bro. You, you know what I mean? Because um, that, that's what it is, man. That's what it is. You, you get me? But um, I just want to continue to help give back inspire i found my lane i found my lane and i'm gonna run with it i'm gonna try not to let anything that comes my way um, divert me because a lot of opportunities get thrown at you but if it doesn't align with what you're you're born to do um you know i just want to say yes so i'm going to try to keep on a straight and narrow regarding that and just continue to do what i'm doing bro you know so yeah, that's that man, but bro. Yeah, that <laughs> one there deep, deeper, deeper. Yeah, I think that's I think that's it for now, my guy, bro. Yeah, we can't give them Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we really try to go all the way in, so. So what are we gonna like get like emotional and get a hug like? <laughs> I'll give you a hug, my bro. I'll give you a hug. Oh.